Hi, my name is Julia and I'm a homeschool mom of two. In this video, we will be taking a closer look at just three out of the hundreds of science lessons available for Time for Learning middle schoolers. Time for Learning is a complete curriculum which combines all the steps of the learning process through interactive and engaging lessons. These lessons review previous learning and build on students' new knowledge in a way that makes learning stick. To start, we're going to feature a lesson from our Earth Science course. During this lesson, students will identify why volcanic regions are located in certain areas and what happens when volcanoes erupt and how they lead to the creation of various landforms. Students will also distinguish the types of volcanic eruptions and describe the three stages of volcanic activity. All lessons throughout the science courses are organized in the same way. They begin with a thought-provoking warm-up focused on a guiding question and feature graphic organizers or interesting visuals to present the lesson goals. The Roman god Vulcan. He was the god of fire, the forge, and metalwork. In the background of the painting, you can see the mountain that bears his name, a volcano. The ancient Romans believed that Vulcan himself caused the fiery eruptions that we associate with volcanoes. However, what science tells us about volcanoes is quite different. In this lesson, we're going to address what really causes volcanoes. Time for Learning lessons use a variety of styles to keep things fresh and diverse, like combining imagery such as videos and illustrations with texts and actual teachers. These features give the lessons personality far beyond regular textbooks. And within the instructional portions of the lessons, students are given clear definitions and explanations for the academic language they'll need to know to understand the content. At any time, the lessons within the courses may be played back for review. And once a student has already reviewed the instruction, they have the ability to fast forward to the portion they would like to watch again. There is also an included feature for closed captioning. This is a ring of volcanoes that circles the Pacific Ocean. Use what you have learned about volcanoes at plate boundaries to sort the descriptions into the correct categories. One of the most helpful features of the Time for Learning lessons is that questions are presented in different ways, like multiple choice, as well as drop down, sort, or drag and drop in some cases. This keeps students engaged, and the questions are positioned throughout the instruction to check understanding as the students progress. Now, let's jump to another lesson. At intervals throughout the science courses, there are virtual lab lessons, like this one in the Life Science course. During this virtual lab, students will observe and measure the physical characteristics of an earthworm and examine how it responds to external stimuli. Earthworms responses to external stimuli such as moisture and odor. You'll also identify the anterior, posterior, dorsal, and ventral sides of an earthworm. You'll identify the variables in the experiment. You are going to generate a hypothesis to answer the lesson question and the virtual labs are engaging and interactive, requiring students to complete the steps as though they were doing them with real materials in a lab setting. All labs begin with an explanation of the objective, so students have a clear understanding of the expected outcome. The next step is for students to prepare for the lab. Within the preparation step, you'll notice that students are provided with detailed information to support them throughout the virtual experience. So look at this guy here on the screen. You see him? Well, he's got a couple of bends in his body, which is going to keep us from getting an accurate measurement. So we can probably say that he is about 15 centimeters long. So let me go ahead and show you that here. I grab my other little ruler again, and there you go. Right about there. Also, you're going to count the number of segments on the earthworm. So do you see some segments here? I know it's kind of hard. The picture's a little small, but let me try to show you. In this assignment, you'll reflect on the laboratory experiment. Throughout, make sure you have a copy of the student guide and your data tables. You'll start off the assignment by identifying the independent and dependent variables in this lab. Once students have completed the virtual labs, they are given an opportunity to reflect on what they observed by answering questions relevant to their findings. Here, they are given access to a student guide, which is a tool to support them as they prepare for the lab report, which is the next step. They are encouraged to use any data they collect during the virtual lab at this time. The last activity for any virtual lab is the lab report. This activity provides a link to the lab report guide to give directions and support the students through its completion. The guide even includes information about the scientific process and suggestions for charts and graphs relevant to scientific data collection. Students are encouraged to refer to this guide for support before submitting their work. 
Each lab report also includes a rubric for additional student support and they can be useful when reviewing your students' work. Now for our last featured lesson. The Time for Learning Science courses include engaging projects like this element presentation in MS Physical Science. Here, students will create a multimedia presentation about their favorite element. These projects include plenty of organizational tools, like student guides, to provide students with support while completing the projects. They also include rubrics for students to use before, during, and after their work to ensure they're on the right track. And parents, you'll appreciate these rubrics when reviewing your students' submitted projects. All Time for Learning Science courses also include the scientific tools necessary for students to succeed in the activities during which they apply what they've learned. These tools include a variety of calculators, which they may refer to at any time. In the case of this lab report, students may use a standard calculator or a graphing calculator, and they also have access to the periodic table and a physical science formula sheet. This concludes the middle school science demonstration. Please choose another subject or, if you'd like to learn more about how Time for Learning works, take a look at our How It Works page. Goodbye. Thank you.